Hi, just a quick video to show how I remagnetized my uh, magnets from a full Model T with the flywheel out the car. I've just done this quickly to show how I've done it. It seems to have worked and it might be useful to someone. I've also done a little bit about peening the magnets at the end if you've got to fit the magnets back and you want to peen over the brass screws. So, recharging Ford Model T magnets or remagnetizing them. So, the Ford Model T has this wonderful flywheel with all these magnets arranged around like that so if any of them break they become little mini missiles to come out and take your legs off but hey that's motoring um, risk I guess was a different thing a hundred years ago anyway so these oh, each one of these magnets needs to be charged uh, they go, um, I don't know how long it takes for them to lose their charge possibly years but um, certainly now they can't pick up a four pound weight so these two old cast iron pistons they roughly weigh around about four pound or what is it 2.5 kilograms something like that so what I've got to do is I've got to take them out one at a time check them see how weak they are then I take them to this little rig here now apparently you can use a battery charger for this I'm using my welder because I have a welder so I've rigged up this wire, um, 12 gauge, I think it is. Comes along here, 12, I think it is, coils here and 12 here. And it goes that direction up and then that direction back. And then I've rigged it down here to the negative attachment on my MIG welder. Now, if you look here, you'll see the negative actually goes to north. And then the positive is where I strike up the welder on here. And I'm doing about, I did six dabs and now I'm doing eight. I don't know why. It feels good. So I'm doing pshht, 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 you know, eight times. Leaving then a little gap at some times because I am melting the insulation off this wire. Because this is something like two, three hundred amps in here. Um... I'm only putting 180 amps in, but it's the coils transferring, blah, 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 that sort of stuff that then really realign the, um, basically the iron atoms at the surface of the magnets. So, yeah, so this is the positive side and the positive side goes in here to the south. The magnet goes in like that. I tested all of the um, directions of the magnets by getting a piece of rod and shoving that in there. Interestingly, it didn't work very well, but it did magnetise it. I think that's because the gap that I've got there, that's a bit of tubing, and then the coils are around the tubing. The gap there was probably too much because I think the magnetism drops by the square or something. So if you've got that much smaller it really loses the ability to magnetize it quickly but I've already done about 10 of these and each time they've gone from not being able to pick up my four pound weight to being able to pick it up easily so that's basically the process so one way of checking everything is with a compass and as you can see it's an electromagnet so it makes no difference at the moment Apparently what you can do is link this to a battery charger or a couple of 12 volt batteries instead and just spark them. Um, and that apparently works really well. I'm just using a welder because I have a welder. But if you link this to a battery charger, that would actually turn this into an electromagnet and then you'd be able to see which pole is which. The other thing people said is you dangle a magnet above, it will naturally align um, and then you'll know you know, light poles attract light poles, you'll automatically know then which side be, should be south and which should be, should be negative, uh, negative, north. But I've done it with um, this, and even though this isn't wonderful, you can see that I have made this south and this north, because the red needle on a compass always part, points to north. So that's the North Pole and that's the South Pole.
and when I stuck it in there it was in there like that so you can see north and then south here so I'll try to run through the process now uh, so if I grab one of my magnets and I'm making sure I keep track of the magnets so I've done number six which is not a number it's a magnet a free magnet so now I'm on number seven what I've done with all my magnets is I've marked them all up I've cleaned them up I've chamfered the ends a little bit taken off the sharp edges and I mark them all up but I've actually used a Dremel to actually grind in a number uh, which you can't quite see on there but it's number seven and it's got north marked so I know oh there's the number seven and that says north and then I know which one's which even after many years so I just take that I grab my two pistons it ain't picking them up then I pop the south in there, the north in there, wind it all the way down. Uh, one other thing, if you have your compass nearby, keep it away. But anyhow, that's north, that's south, you can't see, but keep this away when you're doing it, because otherwise you remagnetize your compass. Now, annoying fan noise from the welder. It's a bit warm because basically the welding current's going in here to here so it's going through this whole coil of wire now hopefully get my pistons and there you go the funny thing is I've noticed it seems to get stronger a few seconds afterwards that might just be me thinking that but it does feel like it improves about a minute afterwards people did say you should tap them when you're doing this um, I'm pretty dexterous but I'm not dexterous enough to tap and weld <laughs> and some people have said it doesn't make a difference I'm running it like this um, and lots of people run it like this and had it all work well so nice simple method for recharging Model T magnets or remagnetizing Model T magnets. So the peening of the screws. Um, unfortunately, the new screws that you can get are quarter inch by 24. Someone messed up the dimensions. The originals are number 14 by 24. Um, but you can get a tap, a quarter inch by 24 tap, and just eke out the holes. And that's what I did, and that seems to have worked quite nicely. All right, I'm peening in my flywheel bolts now, so I've sharpened up my old center punch. And I'm using four taps with this, because it seems the most non-violent. I did try a cold chisel. You'd have to put a lot of force in. It makes a... And I, I didn't, but you have to put a lot of force in and you probably lose your magnetism. I tried this, but nah. This seems to work well. So you don't need much. I'm trying to put four taps in, but I seem to be over tapping a little bit. But it's so little force that I'm not terribly concerned about that. I'll put it on a cushion as well, because I figured I don't want to be banging against the magnets. It took me a fair amount of time to magnetise all this, so I don't want to mess it up now. <laughs> 